here we are talking books reading books listening to readers silencing screens welcome to the book bibuli podcast do you know there is a carefully protected breed readers which is under serious threat from screens serious enough to make shashi taru write i plead you read and chetan bhagat to call doom you wouldn't give a shot of whiskey to a crying child right then why is it okay to hand him or her an addictive phone i guess the situation is grim enough to warrant words do you also know that out there there are children fighting with all might to keep the readers breed alive and raise it they are the lancers holding the powerful lances of the written words to kill the beast the addiction of the screens kudos to these young children who are not only powerful readers but are impassioned enough to spread the benediction they are the readers they are book bibulous and to celebrate these lances we have an exclusive series for them book lances Our book lancers for this series come from <clears throat> Lancer International School Gurgaon where a holistic development of a child is pursued uncompromisingly Lancer International School Gurgaon bases its ethos on a commitment towards empowering and educating 21st century learners who are ready to thrive in a globalized and modern world The school places a significant emphasis on the value of books and reading, striving to instill a love for literature in every child. An exclusive series with Lancers International School, where during the course of next four episodes, we will present to you four mighty readers from an internationally acclaimed school, presenting the first and the formidable book lancer akriti a reticently intelligent child is she i have been a bystander to her reticence and intelligence at two of book bibuli's signature series on international authors louis lowry and jack cantos she was an attentive participant to the extent you would not miss her till the time she raises her hand and articulates a question to the much celebrated author then you get mesmerized by the profundity of her thoughts her ease of expression and that irresolute confidence even when we were recording for her responses for the podcast she kept judging her own recordings unpartisan add perfectionist to the list here we have her on the podcast today welcome akriti my name is akriti shivashram I'm 14 years old and currently a grade 9 student of Lancers International School in Gurgaon. Reading is one of my most cherished activities. Whether it's academic reading or reading as a form of escapism, I take pleasure in exploring a variety of literary genres, including the techniques which writers use to create a unique effect in their texts. Sophie's World for me is one such book that almost flawlessly amalgamates the extensive subject of philosophy with a signature writing style. It is indeed one of my favorite books. It is one of my favorites as well. This is a philosophical novel that explores the history of philosophy through the eyes of a young girl named Sophie. What did you think about the use of the character of Sophie to introduce and explore various philosophical ideas throughout the book? The character of Sophie at the beginning of the novel is described as a typical Norwegian teenager. This includes her rather ordinary appearance, such as her flaxen hair. However, as Sophie becomes further immersed in philosophy, the change in her character, including the change in her thoughts and perception of the world in general, is clearly noticeable. I assume that this is because the readers of the book, who are the same age group as Sophie, were easily able to relate to some of her qualities in the beginning, and were influenced by how philosophy could help a seemingly ordinary person develop an individual personality. This is especially important as one of the very first questions that Sophie begins to ponder upon is who are you where initially she could only reply with her name 
Yes, especially the changing replies to the question, who are you, form an integral theme of the book. Now, let's talk about Mr. Knox. What did you think about the role of Alberta Knox in helping Sophie navigate the world of philosophy? According to me, there is one quality that completely describes Alberto Knox's teaching method, patience. His constant consideration of every aspect in a situation paved the pathway for Sophie to become an independent thinker. Additionally, he acknowledges the fact that his knowledge is not exhaustive and is always open to interpretations or new ideas. This is clear in his definition of a philosopher as someone who recognizes that there is still a lot that he does not understand and is troubled by it. In that sense, he is wiser than all those who brag about the knowledge of things that they know nothing about. That was a wonderful thought, wasn't it? We at Book Bibuli have just launched a new reading program, which is for guided reading. What are your thoughts on that? It's called the North Star Program. It's great to hear about the new program. I think that guided reading is a very logical technique that could be extremely beneficial to those who struggle when introduced to challenging content immediately. I also think that with the larger range of texts that students explore, they will become increasingly confident with their reading abilities and hence would encourage them to explore books further. I sure hope so. I'm into that. What do you think about some of the key philosophical discussions or dilemmas presented in the novel? And how do you think they resonated with contemporary issues? Or for that matter, your own experiences? Even though the philosophical discussions in the book are organized in a chronological order, with the oldest story being explained first, I think that all of them resonate with contemporary issues and have indeed stood the test of time. The discussions on the origin of the world and the classification of living organisms are universal and therefore are relatable to all readers. However, a few discussions may appear more appealing to some than others. For me, the discussion on the expanse of the universe between Hilda and her father happens to be one of the most enlightening discussions, as it forced me to ponder more upon our existence and role in the universe. We are just mere conglomerations of proteins in comparison to the large celestial bodies. So what significance do we actually have in the galaxy's inner mechanisms? Every discussion was special for sure. But could you highlight the author's use of Socratic dialogue and the interaction between characters, which contribute to the book's exploration of philosophical ideas? The tone of the book borders on playful humor and the inquisitiveness of mature ideas. By the use of Socrative dialogue in the book, including questions like, is there such a thing as natural modesty? The author encourages his curiosity and is able to use these thoughts as a starting point to investigate philosophical ideas while maintaining a plot line at the same time. Well, Akriti, what did you think is the significance of the book's ending? And how do you think it relates to the message of the entire book? According to me, the ending of the book is in many ways an almost ideal resolution to the plot. It serves as the moment where both Hilda's and Sophie's worlds align together and their roles as the observer are interchanged. In the middle of the book, it becomes clear to readers that Sophie and Alberto are being manipulated and written by Hilda's father. However, this changes course when Sophie and Alberto escape from their world and are now witnessing Hilda and her father's actions in a manner similar to how they were being watched over before. I think that this relates to the message of the book as it shows how perspectives can eventually change. And due to the fact that the world is frozen, the real world may exist beside the fictional world and they would never collide. Tell me now, did reading Sophie's world change your perspective on philosophy? And if yes, then you have to tell me how. Yes, the book played a pivotal role in changing my opinion on philosophy. Initially, I believe that philosophy is a study of what currently exists and is based entirely on hypothetical evidence that is conjured up from the imagination of a certain person. However, it is now clear that it is in fact the opposite. Philosophy, according to me, is a study of the 
your study of the universe as a system, how its elements originate and behave in the real world. Though there are many aspects that are assumed and not entirely fact-based, philosophy outlines the art of relating existing fact with current affairs with theory, making it ever-expanding. That's a cool perspective. Overall, how successful is Sophie's world as a work of philosophical fiction? Would you recommend it to others? If yes, then to whom? Although this book plays with the structure of a young adult novel and a philosophy textbook, also indicated by the presence of an index at the back, this combination successfully serves as a model introduction to the subject, which I think is important for anyone who wishes to pursue it further to read. Additionally, if you wish to read more on the origins of life from a variety of opinions, including theories built upon scientific fact or history or even human behavior, this book would be extremely enlightening for you. Thank you so much for your insights, Akriti. I sincerely thank Book Bibli for having me here today. It was indeed a pleasure to discuss the book in such detail, and I'm sure that it would encourage many listeners to pick up this book as well. It is necessary for everyone to have a basic understanding of where they originate from and realize that we belong to a network of events linked together, just like a rabbit pulled out of a top hat during a magic trick. Thank you. One day, 14-year-old Sophie Amundsen comes home from school to find in her mailbox two notes with one question on each. Who are you and where does the world come from? From that irresistible beginning, Sophie becomes obsessed with questions that take her far beyond what she knows of her Norwegian village. Through those letters, she enrolls in a kind of correspondence course covering Socrates to Sartre with a mysterious philosopher while receiving letters addressed to another girl. And now it's time for Book Bibli Read Record. Sophie's World It's written in a very light, young adult way with short sentences and simple language. But please take time to absorb the content of the book. Instead of rushing through it, let each chapter sink in before you move on. It's both a novel and a history. It's fiction and non-fiction. It's entertainment and education. The predecessors to this book are The Little Prince, Animal Farm, and Jonathan Livingston Seagal and a worthy successor would be Siddhartha by Herman Hesse We know it is not all that easy to make a child a reader and it's not that any parents would not have tried to do so but it ends as an exercise in futility breeding helplessness parents don't read or cannot read or do not read children's books and the habit of reading is not formed by one book alone like any other skill reading also needs coaching or mentoring there is a maxim if the parents are readers so are their children we are here to prove that wrong it is our endeavor to raise a reader regardless of the parents inclination to reading the maxim holds because readers cannot be created in an island they also need a comprehensive ecosystem to develop into proficiency that's why we developed the north star program a 360 degree program for raising readers a well thought out program for children developed by collaboration of educators authors readers parents psychologists and most importantly the children themselves let your child be a part of book bibuli's not star program and move on to better read read better